Hey guys, welcome back to Steve's Rocketry Workshop. Um, the fins are dried. The fins of the launch log are dried. I got them evenly spaced as you can see. Um, so what, um, what this video is going to be on is I'm going to be assembling the recovery system. I'm going to show you all how to do fillets. And then that will, that will uh, be the end of part three. Um, part four will be finishing and uh, finishing such as you know filling, painting, decals, and clear coat. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. First, then you want to lay your rocket on your side. Grab your shock cord. Your shock cord mount sh uh, should be dry by now. So uh, what you want to do is you will want to. Smear a little bit of glue, just a little bit. Don't don't glob it on there. Um, I mean, use plenty, but don't use too much. Is what I'm trying to say. So let me um. There we go. Sorry, I had a film of glue uh, over the opening to the bottle. That happens a lot. So you you want to you want some uh, about that much glue. All right, and since this is a BT20 tube, it's a uh, just a hundredth of an inch shy of three quarters of an inch. It's 0.74 inches. Um, it's so it's narrow. Uh, uh, you want to push it in with your pinky um, and try to push it down pretty far. Um, sorry about that. That was probably an email or a text message. One of the two. Uh, as you can tell by the tone, I'm a Zelda fan. <laughs> but um, you want to. You want. Don't want it. You want it up towards the front of the tube, but you don't want it right flush with the end of the tube because you're going to need room for your nose count. Now that's dry, okay? Or sorry, that's uh, that's in there. That's ready. Uh, that's got to dry, and it doesn't take long. So while that's drying, what you want to do is you want to tie your shock cord on. Uh, sorry about that. That was a Facebook notification. Tie your shock cord on using a double overhand knot. Um, like so, and pull it tight. Now the instructions they tell you to tape the streamer uh, right here. Go to see that right there. They tell you to tape the streamer onto the um, onto the shock cord. In this particular case, I'm not going to do that. You're going to kind of bunch up one end of the streamer and about uh, two to two and a half inches from the nose cone maybe three if you feel if you're, if you're feeling bold should I say um, tie your streamer with one overhand knot like so with a single overhand knot to your shock cord take your shock cord and do a single overhand knot over the streamer just like just like that that will ensure that your streamer is secure now I've seen a lot of videos uh, one guy uh, he did the up aerospace space loft build from Estes that's a minimum diameter uh, 13 millimeter rocket he called the streamer a parachute uh, two totally different devices. Um, a lot of y'all know what a parachute looks like. It's got a canopy with shroud lines and it catches catches air and produces a tremendous amount of drag. This is a streamer. This flutters as the rocket comes down and produces drag that way. Um, parachute streamers, two totally different things. I just wanted to clarify that. So um, I'm going to pause. I'm going to let the inside of this dry a little more uh, so I can pack this. And I'll, I'll pack it on the video to show you how to pack a streamer. I'll show you how to do fillets, and then after the fillets, after I do one layer of fillets, um, that'll do the video, and I'll do the rest of the layers um, in between videos. Uh, so after I do fillets, that'll conclude no, uh, part three, and then part four will be uh, finishing the rocket. So I'm going to pause, and then we'll see y'all back. Uh, it may be 10... 20 30 minutes for me, but it'll feel like a few seconds to y'all. See y'all in a little bit. Alright, guys, I'm back. 
Um, now we're going to roll the streamer up, put it inside, and start the fillets. Now, what you want to do is, uh, the instructions say to fold it into thirds, like so, right there. Um, that is a diff that is difficult to do, even for me, who has 20 years experience in model rocketry. Um, so what you're going to do is, what you want to do is you want to fold your streamer in half. This is, the, this is the simplest way to do it. Fold your streamer in half. Fold it in half again. Make sure everything's lined up. Then you want to roll your streamer. It says to fold it into thirds and roll it, but your best bet, oh, excuse me, your best bet is to uh, fold it in half, fold it in half again, then roll it. Okay? So it's going to look like that when it's rolled up. Typically, if you're ready to, if you're going to launch, which we're not because we still got to paint it, you want to stick some recovery wadding down here. Um, Estes wadding, I think it re recommends two to four squares of recovery wadding. Um, however, I don't have Estes wadding. I have uh, what, what we in the rocket rocket tree community call dog barf, and no, it's not real dog barf. It's uh, blow-in cellulose insulation. You see, you find it a lot in attics and inside the ceilings of uh, double wide and single wide mobile homes and stuff. So that's basically um, it's basically ready to fly as it is if if you're kind of impatient. But you want fillets to not. Uh, what the fillets do is the uh, glue we put on the fins in part two that just bonds it to the uh, to the tube. The fillets provide strength so that when this has a hard landing, which more than likely it will, um, you don't want these fins to snap off. And the fillets will also go in the launch lug because you don't want, you know, you, you got the launch rod on the launch pad through your launch lug, and you don't, want, you don't want this to happen during launch where your rocket goes up and your lug breaks off on the rod and your rocket, you know, goes all over the place. Because the, the, the purpose of the launch rod on the launch pad is not only to hold the rocket on the pad, but it guides the rocket through its first few milliseconds of flight until it is going fast enough for the fins to guide it. So that is why the launch lug and a launch rod on a model rocket are just as important as your nose cone and your fins and your, your recovery system. So without further ado, let's get started on fillets. What you want to do is you want to apply a thin bead, very thin. Uh, you you want to do several thin layers of fillets as opposed to one thick layer. It dries faster and dries stronger. The more layers you're able to put, the stronger your fillet will be. So you want thin layers and whatever excess you have on your finger, just wipe it off on the next joint. See, like that one. I had enough excess where I didn't need to put an extra bead of glue. You want to do that, thin layers on all three of your fins, both sides, and then you want to do the same on both sides of your launch lug. So, and typically what likes to have, what a lot of people uh, like to do when they're fill strung is they like to set their rocket down sideways, which is good. But a lot of times that glue will run and it'll really ruin your finish on your rocket. So this is the final final uh, piece of this video, and I'll cut after this. You want to rotate, not not. Uh, you don't have to do it until the glue dries. You just for 15, 20, 30 minutes until your glue sets to where uh, you know it's still wet, but there's that film over the top that'll keep it from running. You just want to rotate your rocket at a consistent speed, keep it going one speed. Don't go too slow, don't go too fast, but rotate your rocket. And I can thank uh, YouTuber T.L. Grimmy. Um, I was watching his video on the Estes Hornet, and he used this technique of rotating the rocket till the glue sets. So thank you, user T.L. Grimmy. Um, that is a um, very, very good technique. So um, I'll cut the video here, and I will upload it. Um, so I'll see you on part four.